Welcome to learning at igcseaccounts.com. Please do visit our website at www.igcseaccounts.com. If you visit the website, you can go to the notes section where you can download the notes that go along with this video tutorial. The easiest thing to do is to right click the button that says notes, click here and save as a PDF to your desktop. That will be much quicker than waiting for the file to load up on your web browser. Hello fellow accountants, my name is Dean L. Hoss and today we will be looking at the accounting concepts in this tutorial that all accountants need to follow. When drawing up the final accounts of a business, the accountant will need to construct the trading and profit and loss account or income statement and balance sheet using these rules. The first rule is the business entity concept, which simply states that only business transactions should be recorded by the accountant. So if the owner goes out and buys groceries for himself or herself to be used at home, of course, that transaction would not be recorded by the accountants of the company. The second rule is the money measurement concept. This rule basically says that if an occurrence or an event or an asset in a business cannot be given a financial value, in other words it can't be given a money value, then it should not be recorded by the accountant. So motivation, for example, would not be recorded by the accountant because it's impossible to put a value on motivation. The third concept is known as the historic cost concept. This concept or rule basically suggests that if you are to purchase an asset, then if we say for example we bought a machine at $50,000, then we would record that asset value as $50,000 in our balance sheet. And what if you got a discount? Well let's say for example you got a 10% discount and they sold you the machine for $45,000. Again you would record the actual purchase price as the value of the fixed asset or non-current asset in your balance sheet. The fourth rule is known as the realization concept. Here any sale that's made is considered to be a sale and is recorded by the accountant regardless of whether the customer pays cash immediately straight away or decides to become a debtor and pay for the good or service at a later date. So if we imagine that a customer walks into a shop and purchases from that shop a toy train. As soon as the legal ownership of the toy train transfers from the shop or business to the customer, then as far as the accountant of the company is concerned, it is considered a sale. So if we were to sell that toy train for $20 to our customer, if the customer decides to pay at a later date, he becomes a debtor, he might decide to pay immediately in cash. Either way, as an accountant, we need to record that $20 as a sale in our accounts. The fifth accounting concept is known as the dual aspect concept and basically this system was created about 500 years ago by an Italian merchant named Luca Pacioli and in his system for every debit there is a credit entry. So in other words for every giving effect there is also a taking effect. 
if we were to look at a very simple transaction, let's say that a business purchased a motor vehicle to deliver the goods to its customers. In return for that motor vehicle, it would have to accept that a payment out of the bank account would need to be made to the car company to purchase it in the first place. So if we were to say that this motor vehicle was to cost our business $10,000, we have a giving and taking effect, which is what the dual aspect concept is um, promoting. So here, what would we gain? We would gain the asset in this case it would be a fixed asset and that would be shown as an increase in our assets within the balance sheet and also within the balance sheet we would have to give away ten thousand dollars of our bank account money and so you would have a decrease in the bank balance in the balance sheet. The sixth concept is known as the consistency concept. This rule basically suggests that we should always record the transactions in the same way once we've decided on a certain method. So if we were to go back to the example we used in the previous accounting concept of dual aspect, we would need to apply the accounting rule of consistency when we decided how much we were going to depreciate the asset of the motor vehicle by each year. So what do we mean by depreciation? Well depreciation is the loss in value that happens as a result of using that motor vehicle to deliver the goods to our customers. So if we originally paid $10,000 for the asset. It's not realistic to expect that in a year's time the car or the motor vehicle is going to be worth the same amount. So what most accountants do is they depreciate it and the accounting rule of consistency would say if you are expecting your asset, in this case the car, to drop in value by 10% then you need to be consistent from one year to the next. In other words, if in year one you decided you were going to drop the value of your motor vehicle from $10,000 to $9,000 because it had depreciated by $1,000. In year two, you would also have to depreciate it by 10%. That means that you're applying a consistent rate of depreciation and therefore you're following the accounting rule of consistency. The final accounting concept that we're going to look at today is known as the materiality concept. This concept is actually very, very simple for an accountant to follow. It simply states that if the resource that you are considering uh, is trivial in terms of its loss in value, then you are permitted by the materiality concept to ignore the loss in value. So if we were to look at an example, a good example to use would be an eraser or a rubber, as some people prefer to call them. What an accountant, according to the materiality concept, is permitted to do is to ignore the loss in value that occurs as a result of an eraser that was purchased at one price being used through the financial year. So in other words, if it cost us 10 pounds for example or ten dollars and by the end of the year it had been used up and only half the eraser remained then we wouldn't have to revalue it and suggest that the eraser is now only worth five pounds or five dollars. Why? Because it's seen as insignificant, not material to the overall profit or loss of the company. Thanks for listening. If you found this tutorial useful, then please do wait around for the next tutorial to load up. 
I would also like to point you towards our sister website at www.alevelaccounts.weebly.com. Remember, you can also download all the notes, play games and view past papers and answers at www.igcseaccounts.com.